Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith, and we're continuing on. This is part two of Let's Check Under the Old Girl's Apron. Uh, we've got the carriage sitting here, and I want to go ahead and zoom you in here. We're going to be doing uh, a lot of inspection, a lot of cleaning before we actually put this back together. We want to make sure that we got uh, everything uh, to our liking before we button this thing back up. We're looking at, we're getting ready to pull both these out of here so we can clean the whole back side of the apron here. And this gear here rides on this uh, feed screw and when, when this is rotating, it does thrust against each side of here depending on if you're going forward or aft. And more than, more than not, it's probably riding against that one side for your forward uh, feed rate. And uh, we can see that it's actually it's not so much protruding into that side but it's a lot protruding into this side as far as that little thrust surface area that we see from here until we get that gear out we're really not going to see how actually how much wear is actually in here and where it was at the beginning because we'll see if there is wear we'll see original surface probably around it some some sort of sign will show us how much wear is in there alright so I'm getting ready to slide this out of here and right now we still have the uh, the half nuts engaged all right, let's bring you out a little bit here now. Is uh, we're getting ready to pull the screws out of here. This is the half nut here, and we already have it engaged. So now, now we can we can lift lightly, and we can slide this shaft out of here. I'm going to go over to this side here because I'm going to I'm going to get behind here to actually carry this on out and put it on the shelf here. All right, we'll be cleaning this up. Okay, now this one here, uh, the key at that end is, is uh, ends before it ends the shaft, and this one here it runs out. So we're gonna we're gonna slide this one all the way out this direction. Okay, and now we can put this screw over here as well. All right, this gear it's got a key in the middle of it, but it's still not gonna come out of here until we drop that down. So we're going to be tilt and tilting this and, and moving this around. But at first I need to go down. We get, we're going to get some cleaning uh, stuff. I'm, what I like is get the bulk off of here. And I spray it down with engine, engine degreaser. Um, just like I would if I was going to do a little cleaning up on my engine there. I like that uh, um, biodegradable you know, safety stuff that they have now. That's kind of what I use on here. I don't have a solvent tank. I just want to get the bulk off of here and get it cleaned up so we can get a good look at it. Now first thing we did is we, we saw that there was one nut here and there was no nut on that and I, I recognize them as pins because a, a lot of other gaps use a, a dowel or pin style. Um, right away what I did is I took that nut and I went and I found two matching nuts and we'll be putting those on those. Uh, but we're going to be, we're going to pull the hex out of here first, socket head cap screws here and and the reason why also you see that that rust and grunge that's around there okay maybe a little bit of that is that red primer but a lot of its grunge Hey, I might be the very first one pulling this thing off of here. Don't know. Pretty rough looking casting down in this area of this lathe here. You know, that's where they save the money is no detail. <laughs> The only bad material is missing material, right? Okay, now this thing is still locked on here, okay? And that's because of those dowels. And let's screw these nuts on here. The reason why I went to go put new nuts on both, both of these here, um, nice large pattern instead of the really small pattern 
that came on there. Sometimes taper pins just come up and then they start spinning. Um, and I just want to go ahead and what I do is I go ahead and I just put a line across these. The line is in line of my sight. So if they cross or whatever, I know it's spinning. Okay, it's not spinning on that one. It's not spinning on that one. Okay. Still not spinning, but looks like it's coming up it's definitely getting easier there we go they are tapered pins there's the other one okay now is it loose Might actually have to pop it with the plastic mallet or the rawhide mallet. I'll go get that now. Okay, I, I went and got the mallet and then just before I turned you back on, I'm looking at this seam right here. You see that down in there? Okay, that seam, that seam right there is uh, like bonded in there. And this one on this side here actually feels pretty smooth too. There's no doubt when I remove this, and we're probably going to have to sand or, or fix some kind of edge along there on both sides. We need to have it so that we know that that metal to metal is going down here. And it sits up against the ways uh, meeting it. Most of them have another secondary screw that draws it in, just like on the closing out there. But anyway, here we go. We're going to pop this loose. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tap. Let me tap up on this back side here first. That's all it took. All right, I'm gonna lift it and roll it right over. I do not know if that, I don't think that's ever been removed. And it is rough milling marks there. And that is bond or primer that's seeped in around there. All right, and we're going to be um, removing all of that, and then we'll be resetting that back on there and putting those two dowels in there. But we do have a pretty good pattern that is tight where those bolts were. This is this is by no means looks super precision. To me and this is where a lot of people they get that fear of not getting that back in and that's understandable all right now the end this is the end and that's rough <laughs> I might, I might even get in here and grind a little bit of that so it looks a little pretty because I have to stare down there and look at that. All right. We're going to be getting into cleaning this up and getting this stuff scraped off of here with a razor blade and uh, start getting it as clean as we can and we're going to mask off an area we may be hand working it later we can do that after it's painted and the paint is dry uh, but we're we kind of like to get some paint on here so that when that carriage comes back here uh, probably next week um, it was going to be started to be shipped today but um, he uh, noticed a little issue with the, the gib so we decided to do it right and not just uh, uh, half half ass it okay we're ready to start getting some paint on here we've wiped it down we've blowed it uh, we've taped it uh, we've got trimmed 
we're going to, I got this down here so that it runs and drips from getting the center of the bed and inside the bed. I'm not going to be creating a mess down on the tray and I'll do the tray in a finish um, after uh, at the next step. So how are we going to paint this? Well, we're going to paint this without spraying. We're going to, uh, we're going to take and we're going to roll this on and we're going to roll it on with foam rollers. And then I do have a, a one inch throwaway paintbrush that will get into some areas there. Um, these foam rollers really do let you give almost a, uh, uh, a spray look finish. It really, d the, the paint does um, flow on and hold its gloss and a nice shape to it, a nice surface. Um, I also found through using these foam rollers many times, painting a lot of equipment and things like that, um, I straightened one of these out. It was just like this and then I straightened it out like a hot dog shish kebab there for the barbecue. And this really does pay off to get down in to areas that uh, otherwise are pretty difficult to get to. Now we got these holes and openings that get in here. So between these two here and the little paintbrush there, I'm going to, I'm going to be able to get this done. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. We've been doing mixing and, and all of that yesterday. And it's going to be nice to get a little lighter color. Um, no, don't put, don't put the paint lid on a seat you might sit on. I'm going to set that on over there. And we're just pouring some in our tray here. And I'm just going to go ahead and dab this in a few areas that I know that that roller is not going to get into. I'm going to come on up onto this face just out to here, up to here, over to here. I have masking tape over here. Um, around the uh, plaques that are on the front here. And this may take two coats. It's going to be a little lighter color. It's going to really make it nice. I think <clears throat> I'm going to like this a lot. Blue's not a bad color for a lot of things. It, it is actually my favorite color. Um, not, not this particular blue, but blue in general. Maybe <clears throat> hadn't got that drift anyway by <laughs> some of the other things around the shop uh, hydraulic press and all right let's see how how one of these rollers is going to get up in here it actually squeezes down into that the corner down in there, not too bad. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to start. <clears throat> These are real hard to roll in a tray, so I actually start getting, getting them coated. brushing it on otherwise they uh, they don't like to roll for you all right then we can get right down in here
these end columns I don't get even on the uh, even on a south bin these tail end holes they, they can hold some junk it gets it gets pretty nasty down in there I do have to say okay we uh, <clears throat> we're reaching down in the middle there and we ended up changing out a roller so I got a brand new fresh one on here that we've been we've been cruising along with um, I'm, I'm coming down to the face of this and then here um, I have the other stick roller we're gonna probably like roll the underside edges there and then we're gonna give the pan a good uh, a good rolling out and I think we're gonna call that it for our first uh, first coat of paint here I guess I can hit this side here first hey yeah, that's looking pretty good and we also have our gap we'll be painting that after we get all done here no overspray and like I tell you the the gloss the gloss comes out of this paint really nice and, the, and the, the foam rollers really do good I cover it like that and then after that then I do nice slow uh, rolls now I'm gonna have to I want to brush in a little bit in that area right there <clears throat> and that's kind of how you work it brush brush the areas that you need to get it into first and then we're going to take it right back to that bolt right there um, that's a good place to terminate it okay We left you after we disassembled the uh, the Rutland lathe in there and the components. I'm in here because I just got a box back. Um, right after uh, that video went public and um, and we got a little message right there in our comments and uh, John Logette uh, offered to scrape the ways on the carriage and and uh, and we couldn't pass that up. So. What I did is I went ahead and said, yeah, I'm gonna jump right on that. And uh, I grabbed the carriage and I came over to this bench right here and and, uh, and then I started creating a box to ship it so that it would go there and be safe and he could put it back in there and come back here. Um, and the box doesn't look damaged here at all. But let's go ahead and let's, let's open this up because I'm super excited to actually see John's work and I, we have uh, I have other things that I have been doing on the lathe, but this will like top top this whole job off. No matter what I do in here, this 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 here is is like pretty cool. All right, so what I did is I created a wooden box inside this box. Come on in closer. Ta -da. Okay, we haven't quite figured out what we're going to be doing on uh, on the top surfaces here. All right, so we put in a note here. Hmm. Keith, I thought this was pretty cool, and I figured you would too. If you look at the first picture I sent you, you will see the 3701 stamp in the material I use to make your new gib. I meant to have that remain on the gib but set up for the taper the wrong so I had to cut it in the mill and cut it out. Anyway 3001 is the Bridgeport serial number that was the knee gib out of a 1942 Bridgeport. The 3007 101 Bridgeport ever made. Pretty cool the gib in your new lathe made parts from World War II. I would imagine and still getting it done. 
in 2016, John. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, thank you, John. So what he's saying is we got uh, we got a gib made out of uh, an original gib that was in a Bridgeport uh, of 1942 air. Awesome, awesome. All right. Now the way I packed this up is that it was all together, so we should be able to just lift this right out. All right. I'm gonna set this down because I really I want to emphasize. I want to emphasize that when you know this is plywood on the bottom and then I, I put this in here so that nothing would disturb when you're sending a, a, a cast or a ductile part especially um, it can't be it can't be damaged uh, it can't take an impact in any one location so you box it up like this so that the whole thing as a whole um, will handle the rough ride there okay um, anyway I it, I get a lot of things sent here and they're falling out of the boxes and there's they're just a lot of there's not so much care I should say taking into shipping all the time all right that was 50 pounds all together all right did I put the box lid on it no let's go ahead all right okay I went ahead and actually I want to want to fold this out again here because we just may we may need to set part of this off to the side there all right now let's take a look underneath first and we're gonna we're gonna see his scraping and we can see our contacts excellent nice pattern oil comes in in the center section here and here as well boy that looks a lot prettier than it did Awesome. All right, now let's go ahead and let's set it down here and let's slide. Oh man, is that, is that, oh, that is smooth. Okay, I'm gonna hold this underneath here. I'm gonna set this. Well, let's go ahead and let's take a look at, let me see if I can, how's that? Did that give you a better light on that? <laughs> that sure gives me incentive to clean up these areas, don't it? <laughs> uh, oh, that's nice. All right. Now I have to take the screwdriver and I'm going to loosen up the gib here so that I can awesome John nice job Look at that nice little oil uh, groove right in there nice end on it there I'm gonna to to take some close, uh, close pictures because sometimes the video just doesn't do justice. Boy, oh boy! I don't know if you can see down in there. That's that's just it's that's beautiful made in surface in there. What a nice surface in there. All right. Looks like we got some painting to do. We got some cleaning up to do here. I am going to be modifying this oil chambers here, but we're going to do that in accordance with putting the um, the shooting star assembly on on this as well. 
uh, because it's going to be on the same side so I'm going to have to correspond that and there we are <laughs> John excellent 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 job boy John <laughs> you definitely did the walk the talk on 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 this project and and, and for how fast you turned around you you, you, you got to get her done as well um, I'm gonna have to find out what size shirt you are and uh, I'm gonna buy you one of uh, the new walk to talk shirts there and get it shipped on when uh, whenever I get it back uh, um, just totally awesome <laughs> Well, now you set the bar really high, John, on, <laughs> on the rest of the work i got to do on this thing. Um, actually, I have been doing uh, a couple things there while this has been over in Virginia. And uh, so let's head on in, and uh, we're going to check out a couple of things that we've, we've already done and kind of where we're going and the plans we got and the stuff that's uh, yet, to, yet to come. All right, let's get going. Okay, we're in here at the lathe, and I just wanted to get a close-up on the dial here, and I think it's a pretty good focus there. And I'm just spinning this lead screw for the Rutland in here. We're going to bring her out now. All right, we did have to straighten it. She had a bend right here. And then after we got this one out, we got this running within about three. We found that right here, there was a bend here also. We do not know how this got bent. It, it was bent when we took it apart. Of course, we didn't know how bad it was until we, we put it in here. And we had about 25 thousandths, and then we got it down to like 15, and I started working over here. Putting it in the arbor press by hand press and just kind of like thunking it a little bit. It's like you couldn't even really push on it without going past where you wanted to. Uh, it's a, it really is a easy bending um, little little shaft. <clears throat> anyway, we we're gonna we're gonna be cutting our new lead screw, a cross feed screw, in the Rutland lathe, and we're gonna use this. We're gonna be putting this back in there for the purpose to go ahead and turn a new screw, and then take it apart and put this screw the new screw in to replace this we're going to make two sets of nuts <clears throat> one just to have a set on on hand uh as spares later on which will be uh used on this shaft and then when we make the brand new shaft we will be fitting another pair of brand new nuts to that shaft and then we'll we'll go ahead and assemble the final assembly with the new cross feed screw and the new nuts Okay, so we're, we're done playing with this in here. There was a really ragged burr on here. There is wear. We've taken our dial calipers, um, which we're not, we're not trying to nitpick it here, but same, same position, kind of hold, trying to get the, the um, midsection width there, and we're right around 65 thousandths, and then we kind of come down here, and we got like 55 thousandths, so we, we definitely have pinpointed that there is more wear down in this area right here. And having a new screw um, and a new set of nuts is going to make the thing uniform from one end of the stroke to the other end of the stroke of the cross slide. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, let's take a look at uh, a couple other things that we've been working on. And this is pretty well ready to go back and assemble after we get our final dimensions on it and kind of what we want to we want to play with dimensions and we haven't decided yet are we going to make that a solid um, collar right here and turn the rest of it or are we going to do similar to what they did and slide a piece here and then pin it okay well, this is our bench over here by the shaper um, but it's uh, right now it's our it, we're using it as a, a spread out bench for all of our parts for the uh, the apron and carriage on the Rutland. Now this is the the worm drive that power takes off the feed, and we machined a bronze 
544, I think it is, or 554 bronze. Real, real tough bronze for a bushing. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to set this up and we're going to silver solder that bronze in there, okay? And that is going to take up that play so that worm will tighten up. Um, we're also going to be coming in. We got four blocks here. We're going to make two complete sets um, of lead nuts for that cross um, cross screw assembly there and we'll put one on with the old screw and machine the new screw and then the, the second set will be brand new virgin and we'll go with the virgin screw and then we'll just keep this as backup on this set here um, we have a lot of this stock here we we may actually run a couple sets of this and uh, and we have a couple other things that we may run a couple of uh, uh, so that uh, other people that have the same lathe here um, might be able to get a hold of me and and uh, and con a couple out of me we're, we're in here and we um, we picked up some felt this is quarter inch um, medium felt I forget the actual let's see does it have on here um, F5 is the grade of felt and that's ideal for wipers and very important to make a good housing that holds felt in a comfortable not overloaded but comfortable position inside the housing that's going to wipe back and forth on there so that it, it's enough pressure to where it retains the chips and debris and stuff and not too hard to where it doesn't compact and it doesn't catch anything it, and it can become almost like petrified rock in there if you let it go too long and you should pull your wipers off and you should flush them out and clean them just like you do um, air filters and things like that your reusable air filters the same kind of thing when when you start noticing that it's not coming back to life it's time to cut yourself a new set of, of felts and get them inside the housing now we're going to be machining new housings for this and I did I, I got in a hurry and I ordered white instead of black but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna I'm gonna machine a couple of them out of here so I can practice um, I'll have the program in I'm, I plan on cutting these on the X carve um, and then later on I can I can change them out for black or whatever but I'm gonna I'll get another piece of, of black this kind of material is always used somehow in the shop whether it's actually in customers projects or it's in your own it's good Delrin is a good material to have it's 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 nice like nylon and Teflon and uh, things like that but it does it handles the chemicals and it also uh, handles any any wetness fluids things like that um, and it's and it's durable and it, it's a good material to have backing up your felt so that uh, you're not gonna be scratching your ways all right now I just got I got to get in here and I know you guys are going to be gone, but I uh, I got to get in here and start peeling some of this tape because we actually have a carriage, and I like to set that new bad boy up here. This is my favorite part of painting, <laughs> knowing that th you're almost done and pulling this apart. Boy, it's nice, huh? It's a job. You just got to keep motivated on it, I guess. It's hard to be motivated all the time on every project you got. That's why I limit myself to different projects. Till next time, get her done.
Hey, by the way, those new Walk the Talk t-shirts are available at Teesprings right now. Here is the, uh, the, the uh, site. Um, the campaign is, is still going on for a little while. All right, be sure to drop in there and grab one before the campaign's over. All right, get it done, guys.